Welcome to my lecture online. To illustrate that there's many different ways in which you can solve the same problem, even when you use the same methodology, such as source transformation, we're going to solve this problem a little bit different than we did in the previous video. So this is where we stopped on the previous video. What we did was we transformed from a current source to a voltage source, and then we ended up solving for the impedance of the parallel branch right here, and then simply using a voltage divider. But here what we're going to do is we're going to continue using source transformation back and forth to simplify the circuit to something we can work with. So instead, what we did here was we went from here to here. Well, simply what we did was we added these two components to the impedance here to come up with a single impedance along this branch right here. And then we'll use source transformation to turn a voltage source into a current source and then having the impedance which is in series with the voltage source converted to the same impedance in parallel with the current source. To find the current source, we took the voltage divided by the impedance, so 60 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees, and divided by the impedance of this branch. If you convert this into the magnitude and phase angle format, this is what you get. Notice you get something slightly bigger than 6, and the phase angle is uh, the arctangent of 1 over 3, of course, in the negative sense. So now we have the current of this current source. Let's take a look at the circuit. What we could do now is we can take these two and turn them into a single branch because then we can do source transformation again. So what we're going to do there is solve for the impedance here in parallel. So Z parallel is equal to the product over the sum. That would be 6 minus J2 multiplied times J5 and then divide by the sum, which is 6 minus J2 plus J5. So this would be equal to J times J, that's a negative 1 times a negative, it's a positive 1, so that's 10. And then we multiply this times this, that would be uh, plus J30 divided by, over here we get 6 uh, plus J3. All right, in order to simplify that, we need to change the format. So this is equal to 900 plus 100, that's 1,000. Take the square root of 1,000, gives us 31.623. 31.623 with a phase angle of inverse of tangent of 3, 71.565. 71.565 degrees and divide that by, here we get 36 plus 9, which is 45, take the square root, 6.708, 6.708 with a phase angle of uh, 1 half, 0.5 inverse tangent gives us 26.565. So that gives us the parallel impedance equal to 31.623 divided by 6.708, 4.714, with a phase angle of essentially 71 minus 26, looks like 45 degrees. Okay, so. Converting that to real and imaginary parts, we may need it that way. So we take the cosine of 45 and multiply that times 4.714. 4.714. That gives us, ha, huh, 3.333 plus J3.333. So that's the parallel impedance of the last two branches. And now, oh no, of these two branches right here, not the last two, but the middle two branches. All right, so let me redraw the circuit. So I have a current source with an impedance like this, and that impedance is 3.33 plus J, 3.33, and that then is in parallel with the final branch, which has a resistor and a capacitor. This is 1 ohm and minus J2. So now you can see that if we transform it again, we put this over here in series with the rest, 
that makes it a pretty easy circuit to deal with. So we're going to retransform this into a voltage source with the parallel impedance, not parallel, but uh, series impedance, series with this part of the circuit. Like this, 1 minus J2, this becomes 3.33 plus J3.33. And what is this going to be? Well, notice we're going to take the voltage and write it as voltage equals I times Z. The current of this source is 60 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees. We multiply times the impedance and so that the voltage source is equal to 60 with a phase angle of 53.13 multiply times 4.714 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold the presses. I think I copied something wrong here. Don't want to do that. Um, I copied the voltage source, not the current source. So let me get rid of this here. Okay. The current is down here. I was looking up here, but that's the voltage. I want the current down here. So the current here is 9.486 with a phase angle of 71 0.565 degrees. Okay, that goes in here because I'm multiplying the current times impedance, 9.486 with a phase angle of 71.565 degrees. See, the reason why I was starting to get suspicious, I end up with a number much bigger than 60, which shouldn't be the case. All right, so now let's multiply 9.486 times 4.714, so it gives us a voltage of 44.717 this with a phase angle of 71.565 plus 45 and that's 116.565 degrees all right so now we have the voltage source we have this impedance and that impedance now notice what we can do we can now find the voltage across here so let's call this um, VO. And so now voltage is equal to the voltage of the source right here. And now we again use a voltage divider of one minus J2 divided by the total, which is these two summed together. That would be 4.33 and uh, plus J1.33. All right, that should give us the voltage output and then we get the current so this is equal to uh, 44.717 with a phase angle of 116.565 degrees and then we multiply that times over here 1 minus j2 do I have it solved somewhere already right there so it would be um, oh not yet not yet so so I have to solve this that would be 5, take the square root, 2.236, 2.236 with a phase angle of, uh, take the inverse tangent, that would be minus 63.435. And then in the denominator, we get 4.333 squared plus 1.333 squared equals, take the square root, 4.533. With a phase angle of 1.333 divided by 4.333 equals inverse tangent 17.1 degrees. Okay, so now when we solve that, we get the output voltage, V output, which is equal to 44.717 times 2.236 divided by 4.533 is. 22.06 with a phase angle of 116.565 minus 63.435 minus 17.1 equals 36.03 degrees. And now finally I can find the current I which will be the output voltage divided by the impedance of the very last branch 
which is equal to 22.06 with a phase angle of 36.03 degrees divided by the impedance. The impedance of the very final branch, 1 minus J2, and I think I have that solved somewhere right here. That's 2.236 with a phase angle of minus 63.435 degrees. And so finally we get 22.06 divided by 2.236, which is equal to 9.866, 9.866 with a phase angle of 36.03 plus 63.435, which is 99.465 degrees. And there you go. I believe that's very similar to the answer that we got. And of course, that's in amps. So we're looking for the current in amps. And that's very similar to the answer we got in the previous video. Now, what we did here is we used three source transformations to get to the final answer, illustrating how to use source transformation. But you can also tell that it was not necessarily the quickest and easiest way to solve the problem. In the previous video, we just did one transformation, then found the impedance of this last part right here, then made it a lot easier to use a voltage divider to get to the final current. So you can see that, yes, you can be a purist and only use source transformation over and over and over again to simplify the circuit, or you can look at it and go, hmm, I think I can find a shortcut right here. And again, there's probably another six or seven different ways we could have solved it, but that is how we solve circuits using source transformation and quite often just the first transformation like going from here to here will vastly simplify the circuit in order to be able to solve for anything that they're asking for and that is how it's done so this is where we stopped yeah. on the previous video yeah. so we went from here to here by combining these right here into a single impedance and then doing a source transformation back from a voltage source to a current source and making this that's in series to so doing that in parallel. And then over here, we did another source transformation from a current source to a voltage source and from this in parallel to back to a series impedance. So we did, we did three transformations on this one. <laughs> and we still got the right answer after all that. <laughs>